All right, good day. My name is Burkenda. I'm the Director of Operations and Strategic Projects here at Omni Air Consortium. Before we get started, I have just one reminder, and that is, of course, questions are encouraged. You guys know this. We will have time for Q&A near the end of this presentation. However, feel free to submit questions in the Q&A box as they come to mind. You don't have to wait until the end. And I do see quite a few familiar names on the screen today. But for those who we've not met, Omnier is a leading industry association promoting interoperability and certification for connected vehicles, ITS, and transportation payment systems. Today, we are pleased to have leading industry expert, Brian Romanski. Brian, I'm going to talk about you for a second, but if you'd like to join me on the screen, now is a great time. Brian has extensive experience in security technology and innovation spanning multiple applications, including automotive, critical infrastructure, payment systems, healthcare, and logistics. He is currently the general manager for Connected Vehicle Solutions at ISS, which is Integrity Security Services, where he manages a portfolio of products that enable secure connections between vehicles and external systems, such as other cars, traffic systems, and EV charging infrastructure. Brian has Master of Science degrees in Electrical Engineering and R&D Management from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute and is currently a PhD candidate in Systems Engineering at George Washington University. He is also an inventor of 25 U.S. patents. That's amazing, Brian. Well, with that all said, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Today, we're going to be talking about the 1609.2.1 uh, compatibility. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Perkenda. Yes. And... Uh... Let me get some content going here, and we will get started. That was uh, that was a lot of words. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, we're going to talk about 1609.2.1 compliance and testing, and um, the goal of this is to uh, remind or uh, refresh uh, some of the device vendors your understanding of what is required for 1609.2.1. Remind you of the uh, the value prop of that and um, some of the the features of testing and give you a heads up on some of the, the structure of the testing for this uh, this plug test. So our agenda is uh, just a quick review of you know the, the types of connections that devices make through SCMS and what's special about 1609.2.1. A uh, brief review of the test specification as it currently stands, reminder of the certificate instructions and where to get them, and a uh, quick note on some day one testing. So Randy is going to be uh, working with device vendors on the very first day of PlugFest and um, give you a heads up of what he'll be asking of you to do if you're not aware already. And then uh, welcome uh, comments from the SCMS providers on any specific requirements or um, features that they will be there to uh, to test and to validate. So we'll have a be part of a discussion around that. And then, of course, as Brikenda said, we welcome questions uh, along the way or at the end. So quick reminder, um, I think everybody on this call, looking at the list of who's here, um, you know this already, but... Um, you know, clearly V2X devices, both LVUs and RUSUs, need to communicate to the SCMS in order to get initial enrollment certificates and then periodic top-offs. Um, there are other cases where devices need to connect, maybe less often, but there is a you know, re-enrollment, so your eventually your enrollment certificate will expire. You'll need to re-enroll for that. Um, there's also changes in the infrastructure, so devices need to be aware if there's uh, new infrastructure certificates, new providers available, um, new policy updates, all of this can happen through connections with the SCMS. Uh, state diagram at the bottom is actually out of the test specification, so it just uh, summarizes the different states that a, a device can be in throughout its life cycle in terms of its, its uh, security certificate uh, status. And um, so the test plan, the full test plan, takes you through all of those uh, states and all the transitions. Um, there is a subset of tests that are uh, considered critical for basic functionality and interoperability, and that's really what we're going to focus on. Uh, this is sort of a higher level abstraction of what I pretty much just said, that devices need to uh, generally pre-register or somehow identify themselves to the SCMS system, then they can initiate their enrollment they do uh, an initial provisioning and then download certificates. So that's that basic functionality that we want to make sure all devices can do. 
And uh, we would like to see, you know, a, a, a majority of devices start to do this through 1609.2.1 interface. Uh, value in the you know dot 2.1 testing and conformance. As you're all aware, there's uh, now multiple methods for devices to communicate with one or more SCMS providers. Uh, of course, there's the original CAMP SCMS specification, which does provide a, a REST interface for connecting with the SCMS and performing all of these, these functions, or most of these functions. Um, there's also some vendor-defined APIs, which might support things like bulk enrollment or um, you know, script-based enrollment of devices to facilitate um, you know, specific types of device enrollments and device management. Uh, and then, of course, now we have 1609.2.1. Uh, .2.1 was developed to help uh, normalize a lot of things that were either assumed or were being done out of out of scope uh, for the original CAMP SCMS specification, uh, make things a little more consistent across different SCMS providers, and also uh, account for all of the interoperability requirements um, that had been assumed but really weren't formalized uh, in the original CAMP specification. So things like how to get updates on the certificate trust list and how to uh, get information from different SEMS providers um, is supported, mostly supported by 1609.2.1. There's still a few, few fringe uh, details that devices need to handle directly. Um, and I'll, I'll mention those in a second, but um, it makes it much more convenient for working with multiple providers and it makes the system more, more scalable and interoperable. And of course, Omni-Air testing validates a correct implementation. So the focus of the tests that we're going to be talking about are showing that an individual device, be it an OB or RSU, uh, has a correct implementation. It's compatible with the basic profile that um, has been defined for North America usage and, and accepted by Omni-Air uh, for how a device should interact with the SCMS provider uh, using the 1609.2.1 protocols. Uh, I mentioned a profile, uh, so as you likely know, there are many advanced features that are included in the 1609.2.1 standard. Um, so it does include some new REST APIs, which is helpful, and that's what we'll be using in the, the testing. Um, it does have a canonical key for long-term device authentication, which, which will be used. Uh, but there's also some things that are optional, like, uh, you know, there's the option to use an X.509 enrollment certificate. There's some alternative methods for authenticating between a, a device and the, the back office SCMS process. Um, these were developed to provide more options for deployments and, and to support some larger scale deployments. Uh, but they're, they're not required for, for testing. So if you've read through .2.1 and you find it uh, maybe uh, kind of daunting and it looks like a huge project to implement all of these things, the good news is you don't need to implement all of them. There's actually a fairly small subset that um, is, you know, provides that basic functionality of getting a device enrolled and doing top-offs. And there is a, a profile defined. Uh, so a CMS manager put together uh, a profile that said of all the new capabilities in .2.1. Here's a set that we expect you know, devices in North America to be able to support and uh, a set of uh, parameters and, and device capabilities that should be common across devices in North America. That doesn't say that you can't use the more advanced features or more extensive new features in .2.1. Totally fine. They're part of the standard and, and you can implement them, uh, but they're not expected of all devices. Um, they're not necessarily required for interoperability. They're more about the specific relationship between the device and your SCMS provider, uh, but they have less of a, a bearing on the, um, the interoperability among devices. Um, so you're welcome to use all of those features, but for the, the compliance testing, conformance testing, and interoperability features, um, they're really not, not relevant and not needed. Um, the Omnier tests, the, the required tests and the Omnier test specification are all aligned with that SCMS manager minimum profile. Um, the other benefit that you get with 1609.2.1 uh, is it makes it much easier to operate with multiple SCMS providers. Uh, so we expect that um, you know, when you come to a plug fest, either now or in the future, you'll be able to 
uh, recognize certificates from multiple providers. And again, .2.1 facilitates that. Uh, as you know, SAMS Manager maintains a certificate trust list for North America, both a test and a pilot version. Uh, there's a separate set of electors um, that validate each of those files and will validate future updates to those files. So any update to the CTL should be signed by the same set of electors and any changes to those electors will be, will be brought in by the existing electors, a quorum of those electors. Uh, you can read about the details on the SAMS Manager website. Uh, there is one exception, uh, it's an exception, but just one point I'll, I'll make that um, in addition to the CTL, uh, the new devices uh, also need to know the, the URL to contact the registration authority for all of the supported SCMS providers. So un unfortunately, the, the CTL doesn't include that URL and um, there's no like, well-defined or standardized way to communicate that. So. For certainly for PlugFest testing, um, we are recommending that devices have the ability to add URLs for more than one SEMS provider so that you can download the CRL and the certificate chain file directly from each SEMS provider's RA. So that's an unauthenticated download. So any device, even if you have no pre existing relationship with an SCMS, you should be able to just use the URL to access the RA download the CRL and certificate chain file. That gives you everything you need to know to validate certificates from that SCMS provider. And if there's any changes to that, you can go back and, and get the latest CRL and certificate chain file. So um, that is one thing that is uh, an exception or an addition to just having that CTL from SCMS manager. You should also have all of those URLs loaded into your system and those will be available to you for the, the plug fest. The Amir 764B uh, test specification, you can see the uh, full spec specified name uh, under the current version there. Uh, that's available for, for download. Um, you can go to the Omnier member site to, uh, to get a copy of that. So this is a pretty extensive test plan, uh, test specification. Uh, there's about 56 different tests defined in there that test all aspects of 1609.2, all the ways that a device can connect to an SCMS provider, uh, pretty extensively covered in there. Uh, however, as I mentioned, you don't need to do everything um, to go through the test plan. Um, so there's only tests, only 10 tests that are actually required or considered required to uh, you know, pass the Omnier tests for uh, 1609.2. And those are the ones that are, are shown here and those map against those basic functionality. So um, a device just has to show that it can do an enrollment, um, it can download a CTL, CRL, a certificate chain file, and it can successfully request and, and download authorization certificates. Uh, so the, the requirements for you know, demonstrating 1609.2.1 capabilities are really limited to that basic functionality. If you can do that, then we know that you can uh, download you know, the, the CTL and the CRL and, and the certificate chain file from other, uh, other SEMS providers. Um, so then you can start to interoperate with other devices. So that's really what we're looking for device vendors to show when they come in and they do any type of .2.1 testing is that basic functionality. And um, just a reminder, um, details on how to contact each of the SCMS uh, vendors is all available in the certificate request document. Uh, latest version of that is uh, version 7.9. That's the version we'll be using for the plug fest. Um, the, the latest version of that is available in the uh, documents under review portion of the cybersecurity work group in SharePoint. It's probably elsewhere, although I'm not exactly sure where else you can get it from. So I know the latest version is there. Um, and if you have any trouble getting hold of that, you can contact me or Randy and we'll make sure you know where to, where to find the latest version. Um, that file has detailed instructions on how to request and obtain certificates specifically for the plug fest. So who to contact, who all the vendors are, all the parameters that you need should be defined in there. So if anything is unclear after reading through that document, you can contact any of the SCMS uh, providers and they'll help you figure out any additional details that you need. 
I mentioned that on day one of PlugFest, uh, Randy is going to be meeting with each of the hardware vendors and uh, trying to go through a, a set of initial tests. So uh, the idea here, as I understand it, is to uh, run through a, a suite of uh, basic functionality tests just to understand quickly and, and put together a, an anonymized uh, set of, of information on which devices are capable of certain types of, of testing um, and figure that out quickly. So uh, there's actually a much longer list of tests that will be attempted or tried in that day one session. Uh, what's shown here are just the subset, and there's uh, five tests that are relevant to 1609.2.1 that are part of that sort of rapid test suite. So again, this follows the theme of we're just looking for basic functionality. So this shows that you can uh, enroll with uh, an SCMS provider and, um, and request and, and download certificates. So any portion of this that your devices are able to uh, support, um, you can go through those on day one, and then you can go through the, the more extensive uh, detailed tests later in the week when you have a, a session with one of the SCMS providers and get more detailed feedback. If there's any issues or any problems, you can diagnose and debug those. But on day one, this intent is to do a sort of a very quick run through and, and make sure that um, you know if, if you believe you can test or support some of these, demonstrate that you can do that. If, um, if you know that you can't, then let Randy know and you can move on to, to other tests uh, during that day one review. Uh, just to give an example of the kind of configuration parameters that you can load into your device, as I mentioned earlier, the key feature is the, uh, the URL. So uh, you need to know how to contact the SCMS. So shown there is the URL for the ISS SCMS. And then typically there's an out of band process uh, to get the canonical key shared from your device to the SCMS so that they know when the device connects for the first time that it, it really is the, the device. Uh, so for ISS, that's done through uh, basically a, an email or you know, file transfer. Um, and we can provide some details on what the structure of that content should be. Um, once you do that, everything else can be automated. Everything else can go through the API. Um, so just a, a quick bootstrap process. If you are planning to do that day one testing with Randy, then uh, if you wanted to use the ISS SCMS, then it would be uh, behoove you to do that registration step uh, ahead of time. So if you could get your canonical key to us before you show up at PlugFest, we'll make sure it's in the system. So when you do the testing with Randy, you can, you can get through that enrollment step right away. Uh, so that's just one example. Uh, I'm going to pause here and invite the other SCMS vendors. Um, I don't know we've got uh, uh, a couple of people on from Microsec. Um, would you guys want to comment at all about um, enrolling with uh, with the Microsec uh, SCMS? And I'm going to ask uh, Burkenda if, if you could enable them to speak if they're able Hi, to. Hi, yes. Who am I looking for specifically? I can pull them in. Uh, I have so, Meadow here from Cecil yeah. Tech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've invited her in. Okay. Them in, and then um, who else? So you've got uh, Peter. I, I'm not sure who. If, if you guys could maybe raise a hand, or uh, what? I don't know how they can speak up. So you've got Peter and. Peter. Just invited Peter in as well. Okay, cool. So Peter and Meadow, you've been invited into the panelist. Do you hear me? Yep, yeah. I can. Good. So yeah, I mean, um, yeah, it's it's useful for us also if you can send us the uh, canonical keys in advance, but we can we can also manage it on site. So sure. Yeah, it's practically a uh, two minutes procedure two three minutes procedure for us so it's no problem if if uh, you don't send it ahead but yeah it's it's of course it's more set up if if we can you can receive it ahead excellent is there a particular format that you uh, you expect it to come in or is it uh, just oer encoded uh, key and you'll you'll get it yeah oer encoded key and hex encoded um, yeah. uh, we also need the 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 public key the yeah. um yeah, and the and the canonical ID, yeah. Right. 
perfect. Right. Um, okay. And uh, Meadow from Saysol Tech, um, would, would you like to comment on your uh, your setup requirements? And if you guys, I, I think you had a little more extensive content you wanted to share about some testing. If you have content you want to share, you're welcome to do that. Do you hear me? I, I, I hear you. I'm, I'm asking if okay. uh, Meadow okay. from uh, Saysol Tech. Yeah, I think you're on mute. Oh yeah, hi. Um, if you're okay with that, can I? Um, can you also uh, choose Uzi Udi as a member of the discussion? Yes, we can. I'll select them now. Yeah, thank you. Um, we're also same as um, you guys, and would you mind telling me the name one more time? Sorry. Meadow. That is a uh, Woody what? Kim. Woody. I don't see him. I don't see Woody. I don't see him online. Woody may have joined as Jay. Woody, if you could raise your hand. Possibly, oh, I think they could can't do hand raise. So, oh, yep, there it is. Let's see. I see a hand raise. Where is it? Jay Jang. All right, Woody, I promoted you to a panelist. If you can join us on screen, that'd be great. Hi, Woody. Uh, hi, Woody. Hello. Hello. Yeah. I hear you. Most of parameter is uh, similar with other SMS provider. Great. We, uh, yeah, device manufacturer send me a public key and can we call ID mm -hmm. and device type. Yeah, only yeah. things. Okay. Yeah. And then at the PlugFest, uh, SaySoltech will be presenting some more detailed info on the work you've been doing with, uh, I believe, one of the, the test vendors as well. Is that correct? Oh, yes. So before that demo, we can show our, uh, yeah, some presentation about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, middle. Yes, so yes. we have test system automation um, system. So uh, we're preparing the POC demo with um, Keysight. And yes. we'll show you a corner case test and mm -hmm. negative case test. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be done soon with the demo. Uh, with, we'll be done soon with the POC. And those are main point of our demo. And okay. yeah. Excellent, looking forward to that. Cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think uh, certainly as devices start to add uh, some of those more advanced features, as I mentioned, you know, there's there's 56 different test cases in the, uh, the test specification. I definitely see huge value in the automation as uh, devices start working through that. So I think um, that'll be really valuable. I'm looking forward to learning more about that. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have any questions from device vendors or do we have another SEMS provider that wants to speak up? I'm not sure if we have anybody else on, but um, if anybody else has a, a comment to make, that'd be, that'd be welcome as well. Or any questions from device vendors? I know. Uh, I think the the transition and the adoption of .2.1 has uh, been a little bit uh, a little bit slower than some of us had, had predicted. So, uh, looking forward to uh, you know, seeing the results of this this plug fest. Uh, I'd be curious to know if any of the device vendors have any uh, active active questions or uh, you know, challenges in terms of adopting .2.1 that maybe we can help you with. So Brian, I do see that there was a question, but it's actually just uh, people like contact information for Microsecond Saysol Tech. So um, Meadow and Peter 
If you could send me an email, just let me know what contact information you'd like me to share. And I'll make sure and get that to all the attendees. Sure. So I'll get that out sure. as, a, as a post call for everybody. Sure. And just a reminder, there is contact info <laughs> for all of the SEMS vendors in that certificate download instructions document. So if you get the, the current version of that, it has not just information on what to what to plan for for the uh, plug fest, but it also has contact info. So if you wanted more detailed questions, you could follow up with um, each of the SEMS vendors directly on that. Okay. Um, any other any other questions or, or concerns? Again, hoping that um, people can register their devices and show up on day one ready to uh, to do some testing. So. Uh, Please don't uh, don't look uh, confused or concerned if uh, Randy asks you about uh, doing some quick tests on day one because he he will ask. He definitely will. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Any other questions we can answer for you guys? This is a great time. We're doing all of our plug fest prep. Brian and Meadow and Peter. These are great resources. So now is a great time to ask questions. I can actually give a little more description about the demo, okay. Okay. if that's okay. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. So um, we present the proof of concept demonstration of how a behavior, um, how the behavior of the device can be verified before, during, and after ICA certificate over, overlapped. So we are working on that with the key site and um, intermediate certificate required to be renewed regularly to ensure the continued operation and security of CV2X messaging. So during renewal, the replacement certificate's validity period should overlap that of the original certificate. So this overlap period is relatively short and infrequent in real life, but it's uh, vital that devices operate correctly during this period. So th is, this is the main point of the demo. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. that is a, a great point. And uh, it's one of those cases that I, I hinted at earlier. And, and I think you you guys will, uh, will show in your presentation in, in more detail that um, so you mentioned ICA yeah. certificate overlap. That's a, mm -hmm. a great case where one of those, you know, infrastructure certificates uh, has to expire and the new one is going to be created. Mm -hmm. So you have that, as you said, short overlap period. And I agree with you. It's, uh, I think, difficult for device vendors to test those cases because it's hard to set up. You need a lot of uh, systems. You need a lot of crypto to, to work correctly. Right it's easy to screw up other things or break things while you're trying to set up the mm -hmm. test. So I think having an automated test suite that can simulate that and, and create those scenarios is going to be very helpful to uh, make sure that devices are working correctly. So yeah, again, looking forward to that. Um, we've, uh, we've, we've had some, some experience ourselves of working with device vendors trying to, uh, to make that work correctly. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it is challenging. So I hope that works well. Yeah. So if you if you could share the uh, presentation slide if, um, that we sent. Oh, you did send a slide. I think you can present yourself. Oh, actually, yeah. I think you're yeah. now enabled. So if you, you should want to your slides well. up. Be right. like, is that okay? Go ahead. And with the technical part, Udi will help um, explaining. Okay. Okay. Do you guys all see this? Uh, we do. It looks like the slide itself is cut off though. If Sorry. You full I screen. Just again. Sorry about that. All right. Okay. All right. Okay, and Udi, are you there? Hi. Yeah. So it can help you with explaining more in detail. 
in, yeah, we, instead of explain whole slide, we, uh, I want to explain the uh, corner case on it. Okay. Uh, Yeah, uh, we we and uh, Keysight uh, implemented the test case, the corner case test. I I say exotic exploration uh, scenario. Uh, you can see the short diagram uh, when the device uh, uh, the ICA one lifetime is short, and uh, when the ICA one uh, is expired, the two device uh, one is one is for testing. The test station will uh, send new ICA two uh, certificate signed by this uh, ICA two third. The device on the test uh, will accept and verify, verify will succeed. But when the test station send the message signed by the ICA one, which is already expired, the device on the test should reject the message because the I say one certificate is expired. Uh, we we uh, we provided uh, our customized SGMS to Keysight. Uh, it it uh, the SGMS can easily generate the uh, certificate change, which uh, lifetime is short. Usually, the normal SMS cannot provide this short time certificate. Uh, it's specially generated by, uh, for testing. Yeah. Ne oh, please, next slide. Also, we can test the ACA certificate uh, exploration and renewed scenario. It's similar with uh, ICA case. And next slide. Also, we can uh, provide more negative test cases, like uh, invalid signature of the issuer and uh, app permission in the certificate doesn't include PSI in the security header. This case is described in SAE J3161 specification so we can uh, make these test cases easily by our SMS uh, for testing so we we worked together with uh, Keysight and we will demo this scenario also excellent uh, I, I'm, I'm curious uh, when a device is is set up through the key site system with these special certificates, I assume it could also broadcast to third party devices. So uh, you know, RSU might broadcast a spat message that's chained to a short lived uh, uh, short lived uh, ICA. So you could actually have a third party device participate in a test as well. Could it, is that correct? 어 매도니 좀 설명을 이, 지금은 그 우리 커스텀 커스텀 API를 통해서 하고 있는데 sorry for saying Korean <웃음> 그 네. 나중에는 이제 다투다던을 통해서 표준화된 API를 써서 사용할 거라고 좀 얘기 좀 해주세요. So at the moment we're using customized devices, but 아. yeah, after that we will use um. API, the standardized API, yep. or Excellent. yeah, XO91, that to that one. Yep. Got it. Awesome. 
Cool. Well, thank you for explaining. And uh, again, I think I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, learning more and I'm sure others as well. Uh, any other questions from the audience? <clears throat> oh. Okay. And then I think, Rikan, I'm going to hand it back to you. I think that's all we have for, uh, for today. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thank you guys so much. Brian, thank you for your time. Meadow, Woody, Peter, thank you so much. We'll get this posted for everybody pretty quickly. And then as a follow-up, we'll send out the contact and the links. Okay, everybody have a great day. Thank you.